What's going on guys, Vic VP here. On this one today, Stern Pinball officially releasing the launch trailer along with the features trailer for its new upcoming pinball machine, John Wick. Why is this important? Why am I here? Well, I had an amazing opportunity to play John Wick before it was even announced. All right guys, you know the drill, if you're not following me on all the socials, what are you waiting for? Be sure to follow me at Vic underscore VP. There's a link tree link down below. Go click it. You'll get links to all my socials, even including Instagram, TikTok, and obviously YouTube. Be sure to like, subscribe, and also comment down below. Let me know your thoughts on the newly released John Wick. Enough of the social media plugin. We all know why you're here. You want some opinions. You want more details. You might even want some exclusive footage that I shot of John Wick. Now, before anything, I do have to give a big shout out and a big thank you, not only to Stern Pinball, but to my buddy B Kong over at Kong's R Us for giving me this amazing opportunity to play Stern's John Wick before it was even announced. Stay tuned, I have a video coming up on that day along with some uncut footage that I plan to show off. Now, be sure to stay tuned as I do have a full story time video coming up talking about the day I went to go play this game. It was a day full of surprises, but one big major surprise that I wasn't ready for. Not only did I meet the CEO of Stern Pinball himself, Seth Davis, but he's the one that taught me and gave me a little bit of a tutorial on this game. Now I had the amazing opportunity to play the premium edition of this table. And I would probably say the biggest eye-catching thing when you walk past this machine or if you're in front of it is the neon noir edge lit New York City skyline. Now upon talking to Seth Davis, Seth Davis was emphasizing a lot on this Neon Noir. He was basically saying, hey, for you to be in the world of John Wick, everything's gotta give you that Neon Noir look and color scheme. Now as far as edge lip plastics, those are mostly seen in the rear of the cabinet. You can see there that we do have the green edge lit New York City skyline along with the top of the red circle club. That also trickles down into the outlane area and the slingshot area. Now this Neon Noir vibe is not only seen in the edge lip plastics, as you can see it's kind of all over the play field, even on the apron, adding this neon color. You can see there the pink on the apron along with the entrance into the Red Circle Club. In all honesty, the Neon Noir vibe that Stern was going for, they definitely nailed it on this machine. Now aside from the Neon Noir vibe, what's John Wick without his signature vehicle, the 69 Mustang? One major toy that is a big eye grabber on this machine. Now, if you've seen the films, you know that John Wick is not only an elite hitman, but the dude loves his Mustang and he knows how to drive it pretty damn good. Now, Seth was telling me that he did want players to feel like they were drifting in and out of the play field somehow, so they did come up with this idea of the Mustang Bash toy. It's a pretty cool toy. It's parked to the right of the Continental where you could bash it head on. Eventually, you will see it drift out and block the right orbit. When it is out, you could hit it on the side just like you see in John Wick 1, or you could hit the left orbit, bringing it down to the right orbit, initiating a multi-ball. Now stay tuned, I'm gonna give you a big detail about this Mustang. Apparently, in the Premium and the LE, it will block the right orbit. But as far as the Pro, it won't do that. Now as far as gameplay, I had a very fun time bashing that toy. Sounds weird because I'm supposed to be John Wick and I'm bashing my own Mustang, but all in all, it's a very satisfying shot and it's a satisfying visual having that car fly out in front of the Continental and blocking the right orbit, the Winston orbit, you could say. Now, I did watch John Wick 1 before I went to go play this game, so it's pretty cool to see the footage from John Wick 1 in this whole car multi-ball sequence. Uh, it's at the end of John Wick where you're battling Vigo and you're racing and you're kind of just bashing into each other uh, and your, your charger at the time kind of falls over the ledge. Uh, it's pretty cool. Again, as you bash this toy, you can look at your LCD display and you will see the movie clips from John Wick 1. Now aside from his Mustang, what's John Wick without his signature weapons crate? Stern did a great job replicating this crate on the play field. It's located on the right side just above the right slingshot it's got three targets. Once you hit those three targets, the crate physically opens up, revealing a passageway down to the basement. Now, it's pretty funny. On Stern's launch trailer, they just say that the ball goes down a secret passageway. I got the vibe of the ball going down into the basement, just like John Wick goes down to the basement, grabs a sledgehammer, and is digging up 
his weapons crate. It's pretty cool. Once you're down there, you do start jobs. Uh, it's a very satisfying visual. Uh, unfortunately though, that is only gonna happen for the premium and the LE models. Again, stay tuned later in the video, I'll be going over the differences in the models. Now aside having said there, I was able to meet Kyle, one of the programmers on the team. He gave me this little Easter egg. He said, Vic, every time you bash that weapons crate, if you listen carefully, it's actually John Wick smacking the sledgehammer against the concrete from the movie. So that was pretty cool. Once he said it, I instantly kept hearing it every time I was hitting the weapons crate. Now it's pretty cool when the ball does go down this hidden passageway, your job is started. You get a little video on the LCD screen and then it does get vertical up kicked right into your right flipper. Now on my game, it didn't happen every single time. I'd probably say one out of five times the ball would actually come back up to the weapons crate, slide back down, and then go up the wire form. Not a bad thing, not awful. It was just something that I kind of noticed and it happened. And uh, it's, it's, not, uh, it's not detrimental. Don't, don't take it the wrong way. Now keep in mind, I only watched John Wick 1, but there is another signature toy on the play field that is known as the Blood Oath Marker. John Wick 1 doesn't really show too much of this, but I did watch quickly some overview videos on YouTube as far as John Wick 2, 3, and 4. I got the concept of this blood oath marker. Basically, it's like once you get this marker, you can't deny the job. It's a, it's a, it's a whole thing. Uh, you'll probably have to watch John Wick to totally understand it. But there is a toy on the play field for it. As far as the premium and the LE models, you will have an actual sculpted blood oath marker that opens and closes. Unfortunately, the pro model does not have the open and close function. Now this blood oath marker does give you a cool visual. When it opens, it does reveal two fingerprints that are blacked out. Uh, essentially, as you play, you collect one or two of the fingerprints. Now, if you read all the promo stuff on this blood oath marker, they say be sure to use it wisely. That blood oath marker is actually a ball save. You essentially get two ball saves per round slash ball. Uh, most of the time when I was playing, I only got one. So one fingerprint would be lit. Now they did incorporate this pretty cool. As you can see on the outer lanes, you have the words ball save in yellow. As you flip your flipper, the ball slave does move. Now in all the advertisement details, they do say to be sure to use your blood oath wisely. Now I understand what they mean. Again, you essentially could get one or two ball saves. You will fill in those fingerprints. If you see your ball going down the right out lane, you better hope that you hit the right flipper and illuminated that ball save on the right out lane. Now I just want to touch up on real quick, like I mentioned before, as far as the premium and the LE, you will have a physical door opening and close. It's a very cool effect. As I saw in the featurette video, you could see on the pro version, that door is just open. So you're not really losing the effect. You're not losing out on fingerprints and the LEDs. In all honesty, as I look at the play field though, underneath the blood oath marker, there is two fingerprints on the play field. So I'm just trying to understand why it's doubled, maybe just to give you a visual kind of thing, but all in all, very cool. In all honesty, I wouldn't know that it was a ball save unless Keith or Seth told me slash unless I was really holding the ball and like looking at the screen. Now, as far as details, you could even see that they incorporated the gold coins on the play field with some LED lighting behind it. You do have the Continental, which is also a captive ball, and you do have on the left the Red Circle Club. Now, looking at the Red Circle Club, you only physically see a pop bumper, but there is actually a slingshot hidden in there as well. So it's pretty cool. You got a bunch of stand-up targets, a pop bumper, and a slingshot. Once you get in there, the ball is just going bam, bam, bam. It's just going everywhere. It kind of gives you that feeling that you're fighting bad guys and you're kind of just get out of the, the club alive. Uh, it's a very cool effect. Now the last little detail about the Red Circle Club, there is a black drop target that will either block your entrance or your exit to the club. Now Seth filled me in on a little cool thing about that drop target. If you're in the club and the target pops up blocking your exit, before that target drops, it actually kicks your ball back into the pump pumper causing mayhem. I do own a Godfather, so I do feel like that drop target 
it's almost similar to what is underneath the gangster. Now, I'm not an expert, but I kind of feel like all drop targets do that. They always give you a little kind of bump back. Uh, but Seth said that that drop target is specifically designed to kick your ball back into the pop bumper and into the slingshot and then into all those targets. Now, the last mech I want to talk about, which was on the premium and will be on the LE, is that ball lock. That ball lock is achieved by hitting the Continental a bunch of times, lighting the Winston lights, shooting your ball up the Charon ramp, and then going into the ball lock, which goes behind the play field, and then back in above the Red Circle Club. Now, as I was playing the game, I'll be honest, that Charon ramp, whatever you want to pronounce his name, that ramp is a difficult shot. Not that it's a, you know, a bad shot. Uh, it does require some skill to hit that ramp. That ramp is fairly narrow, so you do need to hit it with some precision. That ramp does have a diverter. The diverter will send the ball down to the right side of the Continental, or if you do have all the Winston lights lit up, you activate the ball lock mode. It will divert, send the ball behind the play field, back in front where the ball lock is above the Red Circle Club. Now, unfortunately, I wasn't able to start this multi-ball. I got two of the three balls locked up there, but Kyle, the programmer, was able to get this multi-ball started. It might sound weird, but once this multi-ball started, it was just visually amazing to see each ball drop one at a time. Unlike Godzilla, where all three balls are just rushing down at you, they have this mech that pops in and out, drops one ball at a time. Seth explained it best. He said, Vic, we were going for the visual aspect of John Wick jumping down staircases and over railings and over banisters as he's trying to escape the Red Circle Club. And I said, Seth, I'll be honest, man, that's exactly what it looked like. Now let's get into talking about the differences between the Pro Premium and the LE. Again, keep in mind, I personally played a Premium. Now the best part about playing the Premium, I got to experience the main stuff, the main mechs that I would consider makes the game. Now the first thing I noticed on the premium was that I did see the cutouts for the intelligent lighting. I did say to Seth, hey, is that gonna be an upgradable option? He said, yes, intelligent lighting will be an option for all cabinets, the pro and the premium. Obviously the LE will have it included. Now as far as artwork, every edition has its own art package. Randy Martinez is the art designer on this. He also did Mandalorian for Stern. So off the bat, number one, each edition has different artwork. I think the best way to start this, we're gonna start with the LE model, then we're gonna talk about the premium because that has some stuff removed, and then we'll talk about the pro which has several things taken out. Now I did not personally get to see this, I did see pictures off of Seth's computer on the LE. Seth was telling me that back glass, that stained glass look on the back box, not only is it artwork, but the gold accent it's actually got a texture to it feeling like real stained glass. Now aside from that texture back glass, you're also gonna have all of the intelligent lighting built in. That is inside the cabinet along with in the speaker grills. Speaking of speakers, you will also have the design slash custom cutout of John Wick's dog on your speakers. Still looking at the back box, you also do have gold T-molding along with the custom side armor. Unfortunately though, no custom shooter rod. Stern, you missed a big opportunity on getting a pencil as a shooter rod. Now let's move on to the toys and the mechs because whatever is inside the LE is also in the premium that I played. So without further ado, let's start with that sculpted Blood Oath marker that opens and closes in game. Seth did let me know that that Blood Oath marker was actually resin casted from the movie prop. So that's a pretty cool thing to know. And again, on the LE and the premium, that Blood Oath marker will open and close in game, revealing the fingerprints and the LEDs behind it. Another essential mech in this is the 69 Mustang. Again, in the LE and the premium, that Mustang will fully drift out, blocking the right orbit. Now, no matter what model you get, the Mustang is the same. Some people are gonna argue that the Mustang in the movie was really gray and they went with the black. Uh, all in all, you really have to be uh, a diehard to really see that one. Another essential toy that I think is very important on this machine is the weapons crate. I personally love the fact that that crate opens and closes. It is a stand-up target. I'm not too sure if it's actually three targets when it's closed 
or if it's just one big target that registers three hits. But the biggest thing is that when that opens up, it does reveal that hidden passageway slash basement to the vertical upkick. When that weapons crate does open, the artist did a great job replicating what you see in the movies. It's pretty cool. On the right side, you see all the gold coins. And then on the left side, you see all the weapons. Again, very satisfying toy slash mech on the play field. Last but not least, and probably the most important mech in my mind when it comes to pinball, is that physical ball lock. Now again, to get to this ball lock, you do go up the Charon ramp, however you want to pronounce his name. It goes up the ramp, behind the play field, and then back up over the Red Circle Club. Again, I am a big fan of this mech. I love visual ball locks. Unfortunately, you will not have this mech on the Pro. Now the one last feature on the LE, which isn't even mentioned in the featurette video, you will own a piece of John Wick's suit from the movies. Now yes, you did hear me right. All the LE owners will have an actual piece of John Wick's suit located on the apron in this custom placard. Now to some people that might be amazing, to some people it might be a what kind of move. Seth did tell me that Lionsgate was so cooperative and they were just very appreciative that they were able to obtain real suits worn from Keanu Reeves and give it to all the LE owners. Is it worth the extra price tag? I don't know. Again, if you look at the actual pictures, I, in all honesty, it looks very small. Uh, I highly doubt somebody would be able to even realize that it's a piece of the suit, but hey, you now own a piece of John Wick suit. Again, the LE model is considered to have the works. It has everything, no other add-ons are needed. The big thing that you do have to keep in mind though, it does have a $12,999 price tag. Now let's segue into the premium model. Again, I played a premium, so I'm gonna be showing some of my footage of showing off the cabinet artwork and such. Now obviously this does have a different artwork package than the Pro and the LE and it obviously does not have any textured backlash whatsoever because why would it? Now in my eyes the only thing that the premium is really missing is the intelligent lighting. But for the first time Stern is now offering intelligent lighting upgrades not only on the premium but also on the Pro. That news is a pretty big deal not to mention this is the first machine that intelligent lighting is being used and it is not a musical pinball machine. Essentially, that is the only thing that is missing on the premium edition. Aside from the custom side rail armor and the custom speaker grills, that's really the only thing that the premium edition is missing. Now, my personal opinion, because I did get to see this cabinet live in person, I really enjoyed the artwork. The biggest thing is that it did have John Wick on it. The biggest eye grabber to me was that on the back glass, it actually has the original dog from John Wick 1 that sadly, why did they do that to the dog? <laughs> Again, Martinez did a great job on the artwork and in all honesty, seeing the three cabinets, I personally like the artwork on the premium the most. The last thing to mention about the premium model is the cost. You're looking at $9,699 for the premium edition of John Wick. Now let's hop on over to the Pro, which again, it is it is what it is. It is a Pro. It's missing a couple of mechs. It's missing a couple of toys. But to some people, these toys and mechs don't really need to be as extravagant as a premium or an LE. And to others like me, it kind of changes the game when you remove these toys slash mechs. Starting with the artwork, as I mentioned before, Seth was really emphasizing this neon noir vibe. And I'll tell you, the Pro does give you that neon noir. It also kind of gives me Tron vibes, um, but it's neon noir. That is definitely what the Pro artwork looks like. It's pretty cool to see the back glass. You see John Wick with the blades and all that. It's a cool thing, but again, it's not really for me, especially if it was a home pin. Uh, I'm not totally into Neon Noir. At a glance, when Seth opened up his laptop and showed me this before I got this press release coverage, um, I, did, I immediately thought Tron or Avatar, but mostly Tron. Aside from the art, let's talk about the main things that is missing in the Pro. 
let's first start off with that blood oath marker it is just a plastic marker it's permanently open you could see the fingerprints and you still have the leds there so you're not really missing the visual as far as like what it's meant to show you but you are missing the satisfaction of seeing that marker open and revealing that you know you're, you're doing pretty good in the game now let's talk about the Mustang. This you will not notice on the trailers, but Seth and Kyle did mention to me that on the pro version, the Mustang will slightly come out. Just slightly. It will not block the right orbit. I didn't ask Seth personally, but in my mind, I said to myself, you still have the car coming out. Did you really save a lot of money from it not fully coming out? It's still a mech slash motorized toy that is coming out. It just not fully comes out. Um, I did question that. Uh, obviously not to Seth's face, but in my mind, I questioned the, the call on that one. Another toy slash mech that you won't even notice in their featurette video is the weapons crate. Unfortunately, on the Pro, you will not have the satisfaction of a crate opening and closing. Like I mentioned before, I don't even know if on the Premium and the LE, when it is closed, I don't know if it's actually three targets on the lid or if it's just one big target. Essentially, on the Pro, that crate is always up and it's just a stand-up target. Now, the only thing I could think of that may be annoying is the ball will most likely... 90% of the time goes straight down into the secret passageway. Um, again, though, that mech makes total sense. I could understand why it would be there on the Pro, uh, especially for its price tag. Another mech that makes sense on a you know lower costing cabinet is the physical ball lock. Me, personally, I love seeing the physical ball lock. I understand, though, when you are looking at a pro machine, especially for commercial use, removing that physical ball lock, it just makes things easier for commercial spaces slash businesses. Now, to close out the pro model, keeping in mind that there is several toys and mechs that are no longer there. Again, the blood oath marker opening and closing, the weapons crate opening and closing, the questionable Mustang that slightly comes out instead of fully comes out, you can understand that the price tag on the Pro will be $6,999. There you guys have it, a little bit of an overview that some details were not mentioned in Stern's videos. Again, these are MSRP prices. In my opinion, if I was getting a John Wick, I would be aiming for the premium model with shaker motor and the intelligent lighting upgrade kit. Now, real quick, let's talk about the gameplay. As I talk, I'm actually gonna just run the video I captured. I did bring a bunch of cameras with me and a tripod, loaded the tripod up, put it right in front of the machine as I was playing down below it. So while I talk and give you my opinions, I'm gonna probably cut myself in and out, but you guys could enjoy the full, quick two to three minute gameplay coverage that I caught. My main thing I did wanna capture in this was obviously some gameplay, but I did also wanna get the video assets that you could see on the back box. Now upon talking to Seth and be sure I have a quick video coming up where Seth, the CEO himself, gives an overview of John Wick himself in his own words, be sure to check that video. But Seth did mention that there is 45 minutes of footage on this game and it's across all four movies. So not just John Wick 1, but all four movies. Seth also mentions that he has 10 actors on the play field and in the game. So my understanding is that they got Lionsgate to get some footage or audio cues from the movie from 10 actors. So it's pretty cool to see how cooperative that Lionsgate was. Seth was just telling me, you know, it's an amazing opportunity. Lionsgate definitely helped out a lot in the making of this table. Now, as you watch me play horribly, there's one big thing that none of the launch trailers or the feature trailers discuss. Seth was telling me that this is the first time ever that Stern incorporated a dynamic AI combat system on this game. Now, keep in mind what I'm going to say right now. It may be right. It may be wrong. This is just how I understood it. As Seth and Kyle was explaining it to me, this is how I understood how dynamic AI works. Now, keep in mind, the enemies have dynamic AI. 
and apparently the targets are your enemies they move around on the play field but they see how you're playing the game they're gonna move according to how you're playing for example upon my gameplay left flipper to right orbit very frequent shot i was easily able to hit that not to mention it was a very repetitive shot that i kept hitting from my understanding now dynamic ai is going to say hey you keep hitting that right orbit i'm going to move over here to the left orbit because you're not hitting me at all so it's kind of cool if that's how it is it changes the game and i'm all for it if it all works out the way it is explained i'm all for it from my understanding as well jobs now are different every time you play uh try to think of it as like for example like on godfather if i start delivery I have to keep hitting the left ramp. Whereas this now, these enemies keep moving, so I'm not always gonna have to hit the left ramp, I'm not always gonna hit the right orbit. Again, I could be wrong, that's just how I understood it. Dynamic AI though, it sounds like it changes the game. But this is not the only game that ever changed the game. Meaning, this is a Venom reference, but it probably went over your head. <laughs> now this is pretty cool, obviously Stern Insider Connected is incorporated in this. Talking to Seth though, he did give me this little tidbit. It may be right, it may be wrong, but this was kind of cool, get this. We all know how Insider Connect is, you get your challenges and all that, but he did tell me that a couple of these challenges in Insider Connected is not going to be available for all players at the same time. It's almost like an exclusive group of, of assassins get this invite slash challenge. I thought that was awesome. I thought that was a cool feature. He said, it's just like you're an assassin. You're going to get a ring on your phone. You got to get to work. Be sure to get to a John Wick machine and complete the mission. Very cool. Again, my understanding is that not everyone is going to get this mission. I could be right. I could be wrong. But that's the information that I got. Now one cool thing that unfortunately I was not able to witness, they were talking about this three enemies and whenever you take out these three enemies, John Wick on the screen is also doing the same action. Uh, it's pretty cool as you can see on the play field, there's like a triangle with three circles that are labeled enemy, followed by a bigger triangle up above. Um, from my understanding, when you complete three enemies, you gotta hit the shot again. John Wick is killing enemies like you're killing them uh it's explained in like the features trailer i unfortunately was not able to witness that happen but cool some little details as far as the play field some people might ask is there any diverters in the rear behind like the continental no there is no diverters whatsoever it's actually pretty cool like i mentioned before the left flipper constantly i would probably say i could easily keep hitting the right orbit now what's interesting is that if you hit the right orbit, depending on the speed and the velocity of the ball, you're either gonna come shooting down from the left orbit or you may drop in to the red circle club. Again though, no diverter whatsoever to activate, so it's really how you shoot the ball at speed and velocity. As far as skill shots, I did hit a couple of them. Kyle gave me one that I, I was like, I have to hit this now because you mentioned it. Uh, it activated a multi-ball right away. If you do a soft plunge right where the weapons crate is, there's technically two switches. If you only activate the first switch and not get to the second switch, it will drop the ball into the weapon crate and then start a multi-ball. So I was happy that I got that. If you look very, very carefully at some of the footage I just showed, it looks like there is a car skill shot and it looks like I somehow kept hitting it once I plunged the ball. So maybe just a mech has to be fixed a little bit. Now let's end this video with my opinions. What did I think of it? How did it shoot Vic? Would you buy one of these? Let's get into that. Off the bat, John Wick, it's a pretty fast paced game. I just recently played Venom. I don't think it's as fast as Venom, but it's, it's up there. All I can say is thank God it is not Jaws. My biggest gripe with Jaws is that there's so many movie clips and there's so many bonuses on the screen and there's so much like video clips being cycled. Thank God John Wick does not have the Jaws syndrome. And no, John Wick does not eat ball. <laughs> I should actually say no, Weapons Crate does not eat ball. 
All joking aside though, it is a fan layout. So it's pretty satisfying to get the shots. Again, I kept hitting that right orbit. That right orbit shoots the ball straight down from the left orbit. So you gotta be pretty quick on the trigger to capture the ball. One big unique thing that kept catching my eye, on the far left is a scoop. I forgot what they mentioned it or called it on the featurette video, but this scoop, when it ejects the ball, it actually sends it to the right flipper. It's pretty visually like amazing. Like I'm not expecting that. Uh, that was a pretty cool mech, so I did enjoy that. Shots are shots on a fan layout. There's not really much you could say, but like I mentioned before, that Charon ramp, uh, it was a tough one for me to get. Not a mechanical issue, that ramp is just, it's pretty narrow. Not in a negative way, you just gotta really hit it cleanly, and unfortunately I did not have the skill enough to hit that shot. Once you do get up there and it goes into that ball lock, man, it is just an amazing feeling. Again, I'm a big fan of visual ball locks. Speaking of the ball lock, man, I'm just a sucker for visual ball locks. It looks great. The placement of it is great, dropping down into the red circle club. It's genius. Again, I do like the fact that the balls drop one by one instead of just rushing down like Godzilla. I'm just questioning the longevity. I hope in the long term that mech could keep up. For example, I would kind of hope that it doesn't just drop two balls at once instead of one and such. But physical ball lock, visual ball lock, I like it. The Mustang swinging out, drifting out. Man, that is also another visually great looking toy mech and it's very fun to bash. Not to mention you could kind of hear the car, you know, bashing noises as you hit it. The Continental Captive Ball, you wouldn't really kind of notice it. It's, it's cool, um, but it's kind of like instead of a post, they put a captive ball. It is what it is. The Continental is there. They even have some like garden scenery on top of the roof. Uh, that's how detailed artwork got, but yeah, the captive ball was pretty cool too. The Red Circle Club surprised me. At first, I only saw the one pop bumper, so I was like, oh. But then all of a sudden, when the ball gets in there, you do actually see the slingshot activating and also the drop target. I forgot to mention that the drop target is not in the Pro model. Who doesn't like a drop target? It's pretty cool. Also, when you're locked in the Red Circle Club and it gave it that little kickback, it's, it's pretty cool. Drop targets, awesome. The Blood Oath Marker is another thing that I do enjoy visually. It's very cool to see it open and close. At first, you don't really realize that it's a ball save. The only question is, I'm not sure why they have, you know, the fingerprint LEDs inside the Blood Oath Marker, but then it's also on the play field. That's my only question. Uh, but in game, when you quickly learn that you have a Blood Oath Marker and you could see the yellow ball save kind of going back and forth as you're hitting the flipper you just got to know that when you see that ball going in the out lane be sure that that light is lit and you get a ball save i'm a big fan of spinners so there is only one spinner on this game which is on the left orbit uh it's got a car picture on it it's pretty cool and from my understanding it's an optical spinner so cool the loot crate is also another thing very satisfying to bash. As I mentioned before, that does send it into this passageway, which then will go with a vertical up kick. And I did mention that that vertical up kick did not always fire off correctly, meaning it didn't go in the wire form. It sometimes kind of gently rolled back to the weapons crate, and then eventually the ball came up the wire form. Now again, keep in mind, I'm not a John Wick fan. Would I own this machine? Probably not because the theme doesn't really, it, it doesn't, it, I'm not a John Wick fan. I like the first movie, don't get me wrong, but John Wick is not, is not a staple. It's not like, oh, I need this. Uh, but if you are a John Wick fan, I don't think you would be disappointed. Now, the one thing that I did think about as I was driving home, I did say to myself, if Seth, and Kyle was not there to explain the game, I feel like you wouldn't know what's going on in the game. You could read your instruction card. I guess the real term is, is this game approachable? I feel like me personally, if I walked up to an arcade and I put a dollar in it to play a game, I would probably play two or three games and then walk away only because I, um, uh, I, wasn't, I, I didn't totally understand what was happening. Unless you could really hold the ball, look at the screen, see what's going on. You know, this whole talk about dynamic AI and the enemy is moving and all that. I, not as a professional pinball player, because I'm not a professional pinball player, 
I just see flashing lights. And in pinball, uh, you shoot the flashing lights. <laughs> but it, don't get me wrong, it's definitely a game that I would play, especially now that I understand the rules and I understand a little bit more. I shouldn't say I fully understand the rules. I understand a little bit more on what's going on. I, if I had the option to rent it, I would rent it. Again, this theme does not resonate with me, so I would not own it. Now, if you said to me though, Vic, you have an opportunity of owning a John Wick, which one would you pick? I would go with the premium model. Again, there's something about physical mechs, such as the weapons crate and the physical ball lock that to me, it changes the game. The only thing missing on the premium edition was the intelligent lighting that I would probably add on along with the shaker motor. I would go with the premium. Well, there you guys have it. My little review slash gameplay experience on Stern's newly released John Wick Pinball. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Are you gonna get a John Wick? Are you excited for John Wick? Did I do a good job on this video? Let me know in the comment section down below. Again, a very big thank you and shout out not only to Stern Pinball, but to my buddy B Kong over at Kong's R Us. Thank you for this amazing opportunity.